Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Luca. I'm the co-founder of um, uh, Digipa and the IT director. I'm the second active um, uh, contributor to Open Drone Map. So many of the tools that we are using uh, comes from uh, the global effort and part of me. And um, what is uh, DroneDB and why are we here? Um, we were trying to find a need um, and we tried to address um, uh, this problem from the open source uh, perspective. Uh, what are we doing today to transfer uh, geospatial data and, in particular, large data sets? We are doing this. We are uploading to Google uh, Drive or Dropbox or putting on GitHub or, even worse, on WeTransfer. <laughs> this uh, usually end, uh, ends up like this, like seven hours of wait for an enormous uh, data set, and I only wanted to check a single image. Or I wanted to check if uh, my drone gave me the uh, right uh, georeferenced images, or was my overlap uh, sufficient to process. Uh, all these questions uh, um, get really um, annoying when you don't have a way to um, inspect and verify your data set without actually downloading it. Uh, moreover, uh, you have very large files like point clouds and meshes uh, and orthophotos that should be able to be um, viewed and inspected directly in the browser without downloading like 20 gigs of the FOF file. So this is the need that we identified we have all the aerial data types that we actually support. There are images, videos, orthophotos, elevation models, 3D models, and panoramas, point clouds. And what we want to do is browsing data, inspecting this data, and uh, be able to uh, view the orthophotos and the meshes directly in the browser. We looked up for uh, commercial solutions, and there were many commercial solutions, but we hate commercial solutions. We need to develop, develop a tool that was completely open source and uh, accessible to everybody. So we started uh, developing this with the um, organization and data set structure in mind. So somebody can create an organization, upload the data set, set it private or public, and you can just uh, share a link to the data set uh, or a subset of that data set and just uh, view it without any problems. So what's DroneDB? It's all of these things. Uh, it's open source. We are actively developing it uh, every day. Uh, it's well supported, so if you need some support of it, we uh, have commercial support and uh, open source support without any problem. And we have a very uh, comprehensive documentation. And uh, it's really, really close to be the alternative to the commercial software. You can go to dronedb.app and uh, read about it. It will be really, really a uh, fine piece of software. So this is what we developed. I had to embed the video because I cannot go online. But let's see it, what you can do with the map, for example. We have an orthophoto and a, a point cloud. You can select the images. <clears throat> you can see them on the map. The path that you took with your, with your drone. And this is a really interesting thing. You can actually see the geoprojection of your orthophoto uh, from the camera that uh, was on your drone. So you can inspect the orthophoto and your flight path um, really well. You can, do, uh, you can do that in real time. This is uh, uh, dynamically generated. It's not stored anywhere. So um, it's really flexible approach. This is a point cloud. You can, we can do the same thing. Um, it's a, a dynamic tiler. You can zoom in and load more details about that. 
and then you can do the same with the orthophoto. <coughs> So you can zoom and increase the details. You can do the same with the mesh, for example, using Nexus. This is a 3.js uh, browser. And it's all dynamic generated. So you just give somebody a link, and he will be able to browse your mesh and your uh, cloud, point cloud. We actually have a point cloud example here. I think this is the first one. This is the orthophoto, and this is the point cloud using. Can you find out what's the browser? What's the, the tool? It's Pottery. It's a really common browser, and uh, you can browse the. Uh, the point cloud and the dynamic tiler will download just the chunks that you need to uh, put in your viewport and optimize it for uh, online consumption. Uh, this way you can actually uh, browse like 40, 50 gigabytes of uh, point cloud without breaking a sweat. You can do that from your phone. This is not revolutionary, but it's amazing to be able to do that with just open source software. This is a mesh of a geological, uh, archaeological site. And we can do the same thing with the dynamic tiling. And the great part of this is that you don't need to have anything installed in your machine. You don't have to install large uh, software packages or pay uh, licenses. You just drop in the file. The tool will build the structure, and you can view it like this. Uh, how this works? It's magic. There is, no, um, no, uh, there is something uh, really interesting behind it. Uh, the three main projects that our ecosystem are, is composed of are the actual DDBlib that contains even the, the CLI, that's the command line interface, uh, to interact with this index. So you take a data set, you index the data set with this tool, and it, that generates um, all what's needed behind it to be able to be uh, visualized. We have the registry uh, cloud application. It's a, a .NET open source application and uh, with a cross-platform. Uh, it offers a web platform uh, API uh, for all the endpoints that uh, you saw in the demonstration. And we have the, the client application. It's uh, written in Vue.js. And uh, it contains the map and the uh, files explorer and so on. This is the three key projects of our, uh, of our ecosystem, and they work together to offer you the results that you saw. This is a more in-depth uh, diagram of uh, what, uh, is, uh, what uh, works behind the curtain, but um, we have like many moving parts, but it works like a charm. What should we do? <laughs> to get started with uh, the DroneDB ecosystem. It's actually really simple. We can start with the CLI. Uh, we can download it, read the documentation. It's just a few comments. You go inside your, your dataset folder. You initialize it. You add your uh, files to the index, like uh, Git, for example. You can tag your dataset with an organization slash dataset, so to give it a name. And you can query info about the files that were added to the index. After you do the, all these things, you can share it with uh, a public instance of uh, the cloud applications uh, registry or with a, a locally hosted one. There are really few comments, but in a really, uh, there are many more comments to do all these things. And um, it's a really community effort to bring you this kind of software. But we focused on uh, making it really simple to use. Uh, 
how can you run the cloud application with just one command line? If you have Docker, you can just run it from the Docker images, from Docker image, and uh, give it a storage uh, folder when it will store all its data, and it's okay. It will run, uh, you will be able to log in with the full password, uh, uh, the full credentials, and uh, you will have all the features that were shown in the demo. Uh, you can even run it natively, because uh, thanks to Microsoft, we have .NET it's, uh, that is able to be compiled natively uh, across many platforms. So we can actually compile it for Apple M1 from, uh, to Linux, uh, Linux uh, to Windows. Every platform is supported. And you can run it just like this. Um, there is a possibility to add uh, a more complex comp uh, configuration, for example, to add uh, a cache layer with Redis uh, or uh, to um, connect to a MySQL or MariaDB database or Postgres, uh, changing the configuration. And uh, you can do pretty much everything editing the config. But out of the box, it works uh, with just one uh, common line. This is a startup output of, uh, of registry. And uh, it will give you um, some uh, useful links that will uh, help you develop for this uh, platform. For example, it will, be, uh, it will be give you a Swagger endpoint to document the API. And uh, there are uh, health monitoring solution and the background jobs uh, processor. Because when you upload, uh, a, for example, a last file, it will get built uh, with EPT. And uh, this process is monitored by uh, our backend. Uh, solution. Uh, we can uh, actually uh, see a um, use case for this. For example, uh, this happens uh, really often. Uh, we have uh, a local data set we just took from our drone, and uh, we need to see and uh, inspect it on the cloud. You can just add the files and tag it with a remote tag, organization tag. This uh, will um, make you able to push it to the, remote, uh, to the remote endpoint and inspect it at the remote endpoint. Uh, it's great because you can edit your local data set and then push the changes to the remote one and vice versa. You can remove add, and edit the files uh, in the cloud application and pull those changes from your CLI. It's useful because sometimes you have a large data set, you push it, you do some modifications. For example, you move folders, uh, you delete uh, bad files, uh, you find out that a couple of files were broken or there were some problems. You can do that in the cloud application and then pull those changes directly on your local data set. And this can be done uh, from, uh, many, uh, from many people. So you can actually sync the data set uh, across the entire organization, both remotely and locally. And uh, we are really uh, glad to have this. And uh, this is the integration with uh, WebODM. Uh, I don't know if you know it. I think you know it. It's a uh, Piero software. And uh, it's the web interface for uh, ODM. We have a plugin for DroneDB. You can uh, configure the login and password of the instance. And you can uh, import the files directly from DroneDB. Uh, it will put them, uh, work on them. And after that, this is the pool uh, interface. You, you choose the organization. You can choose the data set. You choose the folder. And you can go verify and import. After that, after the, the process, you can share to DroneDB. So you don't need to have very large storage on your WebODM instance because you can just share that to DroneDB and uh, let him uh, take care of it. And that's the output. This is the output of ODM with uh, the orthophoto, the mesh, and the point cloud. We have a really tight roadmap 
because we received many, many uh, requests about uh, uh, support of file types uh, and data annotation and uh, many other things. But we are focusing on a few of them that we consider really important for our uh, roadmap, for our software. The first one is a metadata system. So you can, in the cloud application, uh, tag uh, both a file, a folder, the entire data set, a um, point uh, in the space uh, with data. Here is an example uh, about uh, writing who flew the drone, for example, the pilot, or uh, if there was good weather or bad weather, or uh, for example, to add uh, some kind of notes about uh, what we are doing and the description of the project. Um, Half of this feature is already present in the CLI. We are just uh, writing the uh, cloud uh, uh, interface to use that. But I think this will, this will be really useful for our software. Um, this is another thing that uh, we were thinking about. It's uh, a plugin framework. Um, the software alone is not sufficient. We need uh, a way to expand it without taking inside the core uh, for example, proprietary things or um, um, not crucial things. So you write a plugin framework, you allow uh, other developers to attach to your software and uh, improve on it. And this is the final one, uh, it's uh, the processing uh, pipeline. Uh, it will be amazing if, uh, if you can do everything inside ZoneDB you upload the images directly and you process them in a pipeline. You can actually convert the point cloud, you can cut the point cloud, you can export everything from the data set directly in DroneDB. So adding a processing pipeline capability, uh, we could achieve this. And uh, it would be amazing to leverage projects like GDAL, PDAL, and uh, ODM. Uh, integrating them in the platform. Uh, I'm sorry uh, if I went so fast on this presentation, but the time is really tight. Uh, the first uh, time I, I tried to wrote the slides, there were like um, 100 slides, <laughs> and now there are 30. So I think I missed many things. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, I'm here to ask them. Thank you very much. Okay.